Welcome to the Bulletin from Australian Unions, our weekly look at the big issues that matter most. My name is Francis Leach. And I'm Cleo Cruz. How are you doing, Cleo? I'm all right. How are you? I'm not too bad. How's your pay packet looking? I mean, it's fine, but <laughs> it's, it's a bit not... too personal to start the <laughs> first episode. It's not really keeping up with the cost of living. No, it's actually a fair point because um, my partner and I are on pretty fair wages and we're still feeling the pinch. So if we are, it's really hard to think about what most working Australians would be feeling right now. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that is going to be a continuing issue for uh, Australian unions, for workers, right throughout the remainder of this year. And... Well, even the uh, current treasurer, Jim Chalmers, admitted as much during the week after the release of the unemployment figures, but also after the release of uh, some some detailed information about how wages are not keeping up with growing inflation. So we've got wages growth picking up in welcome ways, uh, but real wages falling because of the inflation challenge uh, that we are currently dealing with. Uh, a key focus of the Jobs and Skills Summit will be how do we get wages growing at a sustainable rate again so that Australians aren't falling further and further behind. Treasurer Jim Chalmers there talking about the fact that there's still this huge gap between uh, wage rises, which are still minimal. I think at the at the moment, rate about 2.6% a year it's going at, but inflation is at 6.1, Cleo, and it's expected by the end of the year could go as high as 7.75%. Yep, so basically wage price index, the cost of labour is not going up uh, at nearly the rate of the cost of living. So we're feeling the pinch when we go to the supermarket, we're feeling the pinch when we go to the petrol station, uh, mortgages have gone up. It's it's really difficult out have, there at the moment. Have you cut anything out personally yet yourself and to, I'm not gonna buy that because I just, you know, it's, no discretionary items, not even exaggerating. Um, it really is mortgage, petrol, food. Really tight, yeah. really, really tight. And Sally McManus, the secretary of the ACTU, has been speaking about this immediately after the release of those figures. Uh, she held a press conference, Sally, to talk about just how tough it's been for workers and what the union movement will be asking of the government and everybody else when they get together in a couple of weeks. At the moment, living standards are going backwards. They've actually been going backwards for quite a long time. They're now just going backwards very fast. And what that means is as Australians, we are experiencing lower living standards. In fact, our real wage growth is now at where it was in 2011. We've just had 10 whole years of wages growth wiped out. And we're passing on to the next generation a worse standard of living than the current generation um, have experienced. And this is shameful. We as a country should always be aspiring to delivering a better standard of living for every generation and we can do this. We're a wealthy country. We have um, enough wealth to be achieving this. We simply have not got the settings right. Sally McManus there, Secretary of the ACTU, indicating there's going to be some, some tough conversations that need to be had to make sure that workers don't feel, fall further behind because, as you said, uh, Cleo, it's just getting really, really difficult for people to make ends meet. And even though the unemployment rate sits at 3.4%, but that is such a misnomer because to be counted in the unemployment figures, you only have to work one hour a week. So that number doesn't tell you the true story. No, and there's, you know measurements like the underemployment yes. rate, which is so many people looking for more work, more hours at their current roles. Um, there's a record number of people working more than one job at the moment, and you can see why. Um, yeah, it's, it's really difficult to be a young person, or just a working Australian in general, but I think young people are really feeling it. Yeah, um, and the other thing is in relation to that too is the lack of secure work. So yeah, just exactly. sort of grapevining from job to job to job and not really being able to save anything and just not having any entitlements. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people working in what are called casual roles but, you know, doing regular hours, um, you know, t have been turning up for more than 12 months and doesn't look like they're going to be offered permanent roles. That's something I'm hearing from a lot of people. So the first thing they can do is join their union, of course. Yeah. AustralianUnions.org.au. <laughs> good place to put that in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you done your tax yet for this year? I did. You've done it already? I did. What a, what a, what a I did it in what? July. The second my group certificate hit, the, uh, hit my inbox, I did it. Did you, do you look like you're going to get some sort of uh, return on I, that? I did get a little um, refund, and I am, oh. I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, and it went straight into various expenses. I'm not even kidding. No. Straight to this huge electricity bill because why? Man, oh man. Energy prices are so high. 
You know what I do for my electricity bill these days? I just sit on my bike and pedal. Oh, that's just a great idea. And generate your own electricity or just there get you go. so warm. Pedal power. Get so warm that you don't need the heater. <laughs> you shouldn't have to do that. So I'm glad you're getting some tax back. But there's this fascinating report that came out this week. In fact, it was in uh, an edition, recent edition of the Saturday paper by uh, Associate Professor Chris Wallace at ANU, who had a look, along with a couple of colleagues, at a deep dive into the taxation information. Now, if I ask you how many millionaires in Australia... At the moment, do you reckon in the last figures paid no tax at all after they did their tax return? Can I just say it because I know? 60. 60 millionaires <laughs> didn't pay any tax last None. financial year. None. Zero. So they got a full tax return because they didn't have to pay any, yep. which is ex- absolutely extraordinary. And some of the other stuff that is in this report that uh, that Chris and others have done, they can tell you by postcode which places are earning the most and who are paying the least tax. I had a chat with Chris Wallace about this because I found this fascinating. Let's have a listen to Chris Wallace from ANU talking about how these 60 millionaires paid zero tax and, and where they're actually living by postcode. When we look at the 11 million... 779,081 individual taxpayers covered in these figures and you average the taxable income out, it comes out at $63,882 as the average taxable income. But if you look at, say, Sydney's 2027 postcode, which includes Darling Point and Point Piper, uh, and of course is famously where Malcolm Turnbull lives, the average taxable income of that postcode's nearly 6,000 residents was more than three times the national average. In Melbourne's 3142 postcode, which includes Turak, uh, the nearly 10,000 residents in that postcode's average taxable income was nearly three times the national average. The figures really show that rental property investment is the favourite uh, tax move by individual taxpayers in Australia. So nearly one in five Australians own a rental property and more than half of them get tax breaks from negative gearing. When you look at the rhetoric around the whole tax space, uh, the mainstream media and the coalition are incredible in the way that that people on welfare benefits, benefits, for example, are stigmatised as, say, dole bludgers. But you never hear any of them any of the time talking about tax bludgers. Uh, so there's this huge rhetorical asymmetry in who, in who can get their message across and how. And it's led to this ridiculous situation where even though we produce some of the great resource wealth of the world and export it for the benefit of the world, Australian citizens have never and still don't get a good enough share of the, of the, of the value of that when it's sent offshore by often multinational companies. Chris Wallace from ANU, Associate Professor there, uh, talking about how you can get away with paying no tax. You just have to earn over a million bucks a year to do it. Uh, yeah, I don't think a lot of people understand how people dodge tax, though, which is really great about what Chris explains. There's actually methods that they use, offshoring. What are some of the other ones, for instance? Well, just do, doing offsetting by uh, investing in property as, 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 gearing. Yeah, yep. as, a, as, as a loss leader or negative gearing. The more you earn, the more sophisticated your tax arrangements are, the exactly. less you pay. But suckers like you and me... Irony. I know. <laughs> Out here being honest citizens. Paying as we go and carrying the load. So that's that's got to be an issue that needs to be dealt with as well because working people for too long have been paying their share, their fair share of tax, and there's got to be a way to make sure that these people, these 60 millionaires and the rest <laughs> who are paying either nothing or not enough. Or very, very minimal tax, like, like 100 bucks kind of here and there. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of ironic the way that we talk about working Australians and unemployed Australians as being the ones that are leaning when really they're the ones paying the most tax and we've got actual millionaires who are paying nothing. Yeah, they, the old hackneyed phrase, dole bludger, and as Chris <sighs> mentions in that particular conversation, these people are tax, tax bludgers. bludgers. Tax bludgers. That should be the common the common term. <laughs> it should be. Hey, it's been great. This has been our first episode know, of I The Bulletin. I think we went really well, considering. <laughs> should we do it again sometime soon? I think we should. I think we should too. So uh, don't forget to go to australianunions.org.au and join your union. And uh, that's the best and the most direct way that you can contribute to improving your working conditions, your wages, and that of others around you as well. And sticking it to the millionaires and the billionaires. 
that too. That's the fun bit. <laughs> yeah, that's the fun bit. We'll catch you next time on the board and bye-bye.